Hey developers, today we're gonna to talk about 10 websites that you should know about as a new developer. Now all 10 of these sites are all about different aspects that you should probably learn as a new front end developer. So we talk about design, we talk about some learning resources, and a few other things. So make sure you stay all the way to the end so you can learn all about them. And if you don't know, my name is Eric. I'm a software developer. I have several years of software development experience. And I'm also the author of the Vue.js in action book. So if you look below, I have a link to it. You can check it out. And before we begin, let's hear from our sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Progress. Now, if you don't know who Progress is, they're behind Kendo UI. They created NativeScript. They do a lot of stuff in the mobile development landscape and they created this ebook. It's 100% free. In the description below, make sure you click on the link. You can put your email address in and get this ebook and it has everything about the mobile development landscape. It's actually a pretty interesting read. It talks about mobile development in the early days and what it's like to create mobile apps today. So make sure you click on that link in the description and you can download this free ebook and let's begin. So here are the 10 websites that I think you should know as a new front end developer. So we're gonna talk a little bit about design, version control and a few other things. And just a first, a quick shout out to Joshua Fluke. He actually gave me some inspiration for this video. I'll link his video below in the description below. And also I'll link to a gist that has all these websites in it. So you can click on it and you can uh, star it, bookmark it, whatever you need. So the first websites that I'm gonna talk about is these template websites. So as a new front end developer, it's really good practice to look at other people's work and see how they did it. And also just for the speed of things, sometimes using someone else's template is a good way to quickly get into a project and get things done. So there's two main websites that I like to recommend for this. There's one called Templated. It's over 867 simple CSS, HTML5 and responsive site templates and it's absolutely free. So it's really cool and you actually can use this in your own projects. It's released under Creative Commons and if you're not familiar with that license, it means that you can use it in your site for commercial or personal use but the only thing you need to do is somewhere in your site, you have to have it attribute back to this uh, attribute back to it. So that's the license. So you can see here, just visibly credits for the template somewhere in your site. You can take a look at them. You can actually click on the demo and in the demo screen, you can see here, you can look at what it does, the site. You can see all the Laura Mipsum text everywhere. So you can actually click download and you don't have to put your email address or anything in there and you can download it for absolutely free, but they do have a link to Pixelarity, which is a subscription site, but you don't have to buy a subscription to download these. Now the runner up to the template site, I see a lot of people recommend is HTML5 up. It makes spiffy HTML5 site templates that are fully responsive, built on intelligent HTML, CSS3. So this has the same idea. It's a bunch of free templates you can download. It also has that option to hit live demo. And just like, and does, and just like templated.co, um, some of these are good and some are not so good. So you just kind of have to look through the ones and see which ones you like. I, you know, this one looks kind of cool. And once again, you can download it. You don't have to register or anything. Um, I believe it's actually owned by the same people or they're, they're uh, very similar, but these have different uh, templates. Now for design in general, one thing when you're a new uh, front end developer, looking at good design is extremely helpful because usually new front end developers are going to be given sketch Photoshop files. They're going to be trying to, you're going to have to translate those files into HTML and CSS and getting a good idea and getting good at that and practicing that is a, a skill that you'll need to have. Usually new front end developers aren't just thrown right into JavaScript or given only JavaScript, you're gonna end up doing a lot of HTML, CSS. So looking at good design is helpful. Now, Dribbble is the first website I wanna talk about, but there's also Behance. They both do very similar things. Uh, what I do here is I'll just put in a search for, I'll just go ahead and search for something that I'm looking for, and then it'll go ahead and open it. So I'll, uh, it'll go ahead and search for it. So I'll put in web or Spotify, and then I'll just kind of take a look at the designs and I'll download them and sometimes I'll just try to recreate them myself. So this is kind of very useful. And also if you're more of a designer, this is a great place to post your own content. Behance is very similar. You can actually go to the curated galleries and take a look there. Um, different graphics design, photography, illustration. And it also has a search feature where you can just search for web or UI and kind of get an idea of it. So actually if you click here, 
you can change it to web design, and then you can see different web designs for different pages um, and kind of get an idea of what's out there. So like this is a pretty well done one and you can also see who's uh, who created it. Now I wouldn't say you don't wanna take these designs and then implement them yourselves and not credit the creator of them. That would probably not be great, but it probably wouldn't be that bad just to take these designs, kind of mix it in to your own project um, and change it enough so it's not just copy and paste from these people. I think it's, it gives a lot of inspiration, if nothing else. Now, there's these there's a lot of code editors online. Um, there's Stack Blitz, there's Code Pen. Code Pen's pretty popular. I like these two a lot. These are probably two of my favorite. One is called Code Sandbox, which you can see right here, and Coder.com. So I've done videos on both of these. Code Sandbox is just a really, really easy way. You can create your sandbox. If you click Create Sandbox here, you could see here, you actually, there's all these pre-created templates that you can use to get up and running really quickly. Like for example, View. And your, your whole app is created from scratch, really simple to do. And, and then you can save it on GitHub. It does have some restrictions, but if you're learning, this is a great place to go and you don't have to worry about your editor or trying to download and get things working. You can just jump right in here. Coder.com is really awesome too. I've done a bunch of videos on them. It's a really great IDE. You can jump in and uh, create your whole website. So you actually get access to the terminal inside of it. So you can use NPM installs. You can learn a lot about the command line. That's one thing that new developers, especially new front end developers kind of struggle with is the command line at first. I think I'll do a video on that eventually. But Coder.com is a great place. You can use it. It's absolutely free and you can use it as a sandbox and, and actually go into the terminal and, and start installing things. Now there's two uh, version control systems that almost every front end development shop uses nowadays. And that is GitHub.com and GitLab.com. So I would recommend creating an account for both and just kind of getting used to using Git in general and then see the different features between GitHub and GitLab because most likely your first job is going to be using one or both of the uh, one or the other that is. Sometimes you get an old school shop that's using a different version control system or something by Microsoft or um, I've had a few that used Subversion in the past. I've had a few that used uh, a few others, but these are pretty much the most common, especially for web development. And it's a good idea to get an account and then start uploading your own projects to here. So you can start building a portfolio. A lot of people say having a, like here, here's my, my GitHub. This is something I would put on my resume. People can look at projects that I've uploaded and uh, seeing what, obviously my graph isn't looking that great, but you can see here, this is how many times you've uploaded to GitHub. Uh, and you can get a little green box every time you upload. And it kind of shows you that, how, you know, your contr contributions and it's a good sign to employers. And then learning, you know, you're gonna be constantly learning, especially if you're self-taught. There's a lot of free resources out there. I know people love, uh, love the, all the YouTube out there. Out, there's a ton of YouTube channels out there. Of course, mine in general that you're watching, I really appreciate it. But for paid products to learn, I really like Front End Masters. It's a little bit more than the beginner tutorials you see in like Free Code Camp and places like that. This is a little bit, it's a higher level. But you like, this is Evan Yu here. He's the creator of Vue. Um, you have really skilled, very highly trained course teachers that, uh, teachers that go over these different courses. So I really highly recommend it. If you want something really cheap to start off with, Udemy is great. I have some of my favorite courses below. You can click on it. And also I have some of my courses I've created. So if you want to learn Vue.js or Nux.js, I actually have a link there below too. So that's that's it. Those are my 10 sites that I would highly recommend for new front end developers to check out. And if you guys know of any other sites, let me know in the comments below. What sites do you guys use normally? What sites really helped you out when you started learning front end development? I'd be curious to know. Let me know. Uh, thanks.